Hey guys, how the hell are ya? Time for an all new unbiased gear review. And today we are taking a look at the Hamer SATF Archtop. So first, let's go over the specs of this instrument. We have a two-piece solid mahogany body with a set-in mahogany neck. We have a graphite nut there. We have a streaky ebony fingerboard with 22 frets. We have a tunematic style bridge, neck volume, bridge volume, master tone, three-way toggle switch, and two Hamer branded humbuckers. So this is an instrument I've been meaning to get around to review for a while, so thank you guys so much for your patience. It's just this is one that I had purchased for the purpose of doing a review on, and a lot of other stuff just came up that was a little bit more of a priority. So thank you guys for sticking this out with me. Uh, I'm very, very excited to actually show you this instrument now. This is a Made in Indonesia model. But don't let that dissuade you because this is a super nice instrument for the money. This is a big, heavy hunk of lumber. Those of you guys that are familiar with the Hamer brand know that they do have a lot of traditional specs, a lot of traditional appointments, very Gibson-esque. What that means is that we have a big heavy hunk of lumber here. This guitar weighs in at just under 10 pounds on my luggage scale. We also have a rather thick C shape to the neck. So it is definitely kind of that baseball bat thickness that those of us that have played these instruments before should come to expect. But at the same time, if you are looking for a gent or shred stick, this might not be the thing for you. That said though, Plays rather nice. We have a really, really nice gloss finish all over everything. And whereas in the past, some of the stuff that I've played from Hamer's import line has had kind of that Jim Floor feel to it, not so much with this. This is a very, very nicely buffed out glossy finish. So it's really super smooth. It's really, really fast up and down the neck too. So if you want to play solos, if you want to play those really fast riff runs, this is definitely an instrument that is very conducive to that. Adding to the comfort and playability, the fretboard is very nicely rolled off. There is no fret sharpness whatsoever along here. The nut could stand to be a little bit flusher. It is kind of sinking in on both sides just a little bit here. Not necessarily something you're going to notice so much because how often are you grabbing the neck from right here? But it is something that bears mentioning. It could stand to be just a little bit flatter transitioning from the edge of the fretboard to the nut. That said, though, this thing does hold its tuning rather well as well. Speaking of that nut, the tuners are not bad. They could definitely stand to be improved upon a little bit. I like how freaking large 
the pegs are so it's really really easy to get a good grip and really you know kind of wrench it a little bit um that said i would love it if this thing had some locking tuners on it i just think that that would be kind of an icing on the cake for this instrument the bridge itself is definitely a really nice high quality tunematic style bridge very very easily adjustable and yet every single screw that is on here seems to be rather firmly in place it's definitely something where i can get in there and i can make an intonation adjustment if i need to but once i make that adjustment it's fucking holding so definitely not anything to worry about as far as tuning stability goes for this instrument it's holding up really really nicely as far as the fretboard goes i already mentioned that the edges were nice and filed down also a little bit more rounded off than you typically expect in this price point but also very very nice and even and flat along the top so there was no buzzing there's no dead spots anything to concern um the control layout is a little funky those of us that have played hammer instruments are familiar with it how it's got the neck volume how it's got the bridge volume not necessarily something that is going to phase you unless you kind of let it. Everything else on here seems to be nice and crisp. There's no paint issues whatsoever to be found. Some nice masking off around this body binding, which is pretty cool. It's just an exceptionally built instrument, and it honestly lends itself to being an instrument you don't want to put down when you're playing either. So how's this thing sound? Pretty goddamn good, all things considered. Definitely something that lends itself to more classic metal styles for me personally. Definitely something where I want to play a lot more traditional stuff on. Like, I could definitely play like Grim Reaper, Jizz Priest, Iron Maiden, all that sort of stuff on this thing any day of the week. It's just one of those instruments that very much inspires you to play that sort of stuff on it. The bridge pickup itself is rather good. It does have that sort of cheap imported quality to it that tends to give it a little bit more breakup than I would like. I would love it if this thing had a little bit more articulation on it, but all things considered, you know, not bad. The neck pickup, in my opinion, is even better. <laughs> The neck pickup just kind of has a nice vintage sweetness to it. It's definitely not modern sounding at all, which is something I very much appreciate, especially on an instrument like this. Um, it's a little bit more harmonically rich than the bridge pickup, in my opinion. The bridge pickup just has kind of a lot of chunk to it. Not necessarily a bad thing, but... There again, I just wish it was a little bit chunkier and a little bit more meatier. Like, this is definitely an instrument where I could definitely see myself modding a lot. Like, this would be awesome if it had some locking tuners on it, but also throw in a set of maybe, like, some, uh, some like, Guitar Marie Redstones, maybe some Duncan uh, Alnico 2 Pros, Maybe something with an alcohol 5 in it. I think this would fucking kill. <laughs>
I also love how pinch harmonics just fucking ooze out of this thing. <laughs> So overall, my final thought on this thing is this is an extreme value for the money. I mean, everything that you're finding on here is done rather well. There's no glaring issues or anything like that. If the worst issue that I can find on this thing is that the nut could stand to be a little bit, you know, more even with the edge of the fretboard, then this is honestly a rather exceptionally pieced together instrument. The thing is nice and heavy it is built to a lot of traditional specs so it's definitely going to be more suited in the hands of somebody that's wanting to do more like bluesy rock you know straight up hard rock maybe even like some classic metal styles maybe even a little bit of thrash i mean i used to remember back in the day seeing pictures of the guitars from cataclysm playing one of these things so it's not like it's not a versatile instrument it's just that bearing in mind what the appearance is, bearing in mind what the specs are on this thing, it definitely lends itself to certain applications more than certain others. All told though, with how it sounds, with how it plays, this is definitely an instrument that in my opinion is kind of worth the full price amount that you typically see these go for brand new, which is about 750 bucks at various retailers. However, this thing is an absolute steal at the price that these go for all the time on eBay and Reverb. Any day of the week, you can find these suckers for 350 bucks on eBay and Reverb. That is totally worth the money. This is easily punching way above its weight at what these things go for used. So I would definitely recommend if you're looking to add something that is a little bit more of a traditional Gibson-esque instrument to your arsenal, don't overlook these because these are fucking great. Absolutely phenomenal. But Arnold, what are you drinking today? I am so glad that you asked. Let's go to the beer fridge. Let's find out. So today I get to try something that I've never even heard of before. Apparently I am not nearly as well traveled in my beer knowledge as I thought I was because this is the first I had heard of this. This is Zundert 8, which is from the Netherlands. This is a Dutch Trappist ale. This is 8% alcohol by volume. And yeah, I'm always down to try a uh, killer Trappist ale, so let's see how this fares. Pours a nice reddish golden color. So it's definitely something where in the footage there it looks redder than it actually appears here in real life. This is more of an orange than necessarily as red as it looks. Mmm, nice, fresh, kind of spicy note to it. Slight, slight, slight nutmeg and cinnamon in the aroma. A little bit bready, which is also really nice. It's not bad. It's not my favorite Trappist ale that I've ever had, but it is definitely not bad. It definitely has a more mouth-fulfilling, yeasty, bready note to it um, than I'm used to. Honestly, I'm used to there being a ton of bread note, kind of like a raisin loaf from this sort of style, but this is a lot more like kind of a sourdough uh, bread note that's really, really packing it in in the cheeks. Um, that being said, it, it is rather good, though. Mm. Yeah, this is rather good. It's kind of plain compared to a lot of other Trappist ales. Like, there's a lot of that bread note. Not really a whole heck of a lot more besides that, though. It's decent. Not my favorite. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and please feel free to leave your comments in the comments section below. There's lots more metal guitar oriented content to come. And remember, please take what you do seriously, but don't ever take yourself too seriously.